My name is Meredith Pelusi and I'm a nurse practitioner with cardiology at Emerson Hospital. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important risk factors for stroke, hyperlipidemia, also known as high cholesterol. High cholesterol is a significant health risk. The higher the cholesterol level one has, the higher the risk of heart disease and blood diseases leading to heart attack and stroke. Your body makes its own cholesterol, but it also gets it from food sources, things like eggs, meat, and dairy products. When you have more than your body needs, cholesterol can cause plaque to build up within the arteries of the body. This thick, hard plaque can clog your arteries like a blocked pipe. If the arteries are clogged, this prevents blood flow and oxygen from getting to where it needs to go and can cause a heart attack or stroke. Cholesterol can't dissolve in the blood on its own. It needs transport proteins to help it get uh, through the bloodstream. These carriers are called lipoproteins, which get their name because they're made of fat, lipid, and protein. The two types of proteins that carry cholesterol in the blood are low-density lipoprotein, LDL, and high-density lipoprotein, HDL. LDL is considered to be the bad cholesterol because it contributes to plaques, and HDL is considered often to be the good cholesterol because it's thought to help remove LDL from the arteries. Healthy levels of HDL cholesterol are thought to protect against heart attack and stroke. Smoking, being overweight, and sedentary can also result in low HDL levels and high LDL levels. This can also be genetic. Elevated cholesterol can lead to the development of plaques, which can narrow or totally block the arteries in the neck, which is called carotid stenosis or it can lead to narrowing or blockages of the arteries of the brain, which will lead to a stroke. If you have a stroke, the medicines that your provider prescribes afterward can help keep you from having another stroke. Your provider might also prescribe these same medications after a transient ischemic attack, also known as a TIA or mini stroke. People who have had TIAs are at very high risk of having a full-blown stroke, so medicines to help prevent them from having strokes are important too. Like mentioned earlier, people who have had an ischemic stroke often have fatty deposits inside their arteries called plaques. These plaques are made up mostly of cholesterol and statins help lower cholesterol levels. So they reduce the chances that plaque will form. They might also help shrink plaques and make them less likely to break open. Taking a high dose statin, often referred to as a high intensity statin, has been shown to be hugely beneficial in reducing the risk of stroke recurrence. If you are already on a statin, your dose may be increased by your provider, or you may switch to a different statin altogether. If you had previously had normal cholesterol, you might be started on a statin since your risk of stroke recurrence is now considered to be more elevated and more aggressive control of your cholesterol is now warranted. If statins alone can't get your cholesterol level to goal, another medication called Zetia can often be prescribed. Um, we can also use injectable medications if there are reactions or other reasons to not use a statin or Zetia.